Part A of this lesson is on statements of similarity. In Algebra 2, you worked a lot with similar triangles, and you've done a little bit here in advanced math as well. What we'll be doing here is trying to show that there are two similar triangles in a particular triangle relationship or a drawing with triangles in it. They won't deal with numbers, just sides of the triangles. And what we'll want to do is show that two ratios are proportional to each other. We have to be able to prove that we have two similar triangles first. And look at this practice problem here. It says given that triangle ABC is a right triangle, so just kind of picture that. That's the big triangle. You can really see three triangles there if you think about it. There's the big one, ABC, and then there's ADB, and there's also CDB. All three of those triangles are in there. And we've also been given that DB, that segment is an altitude to the hypotenuse. And what they mean, it's to the hypotenuse of triangle ABC. They want you to show that the ratio of AC to BC is equal to AB to BD. The best way to do this is to just break this triangle up into different triangles to show that they are similar first. So let's take the big triangle, A, B, C. Look at that one. And I'm not drawing them exactly the same size or anything, but we do need to label them correctly. There's A, B, C. And then in our ratio, look at the ratio. We're wanting to show the ratio of A, C to B, C. So B, C is the side of that triangle to the right where it's split along that hypotenuse altitude. So let's look at that one and draw that one. We know this is a right angle here. This angle C, now both of those triangles that we've drawn have angle C in common, right? We could put a little colored mark there. You might, if you don't have a colored pen, put an angle mark with a tick mark through it to show that those two angles are the same. They are similar. Now what else do we know about similar triangles? or in order to be similar triangles, what else do we know? Well, if we have two angles that are the same, that means that third angle, angle A in the triangle on the left, angle B in the one on the right, those have to be the same as well. If two of them are the same, then the third ones are the same. So that means that those two triangles are similar triangles. This is how we need to write it. Triangle C, B, A is similar to, we don't use the congruent symbol because they aren't congruent, we just use like part of the congruent symbol. That little tilde mark there means similar to, CBA is similar to CDB. Have to do them in that order. That corner at C, that vertex is the same for both, has the same angle. At B on the triangle on the left and D on the triangle on the right, those two vertices are similar. Those are both 90 degrees. That's why we write them in that order. So that's all we have to do on these problems is show that we have two similar triangles. Once we do that, then we can show that, tri that the ratio of AC to BC, that would be the sides opposite the 90 degree angles, right? Those two must equal the ratio of AB to BD. Those are the sides opposite the red angles. We could even make this into an if-then statement. We could say if CBA is similar to CDB, then AC over BC, that ratio is proportional to AB over BD. Here's an application of logic, making an if-then statement. Just think about it. If next time you see that, well, I've got, they want me to show this ratio is proportional. I've got triangles here. So that means if I have similar triangles, then I can show that ratio is proportional. So I've got to show that I've got similar triangles, and I can say that if those are similar, then I have 
sim or I can say that those sides are proportional to each other. So use your logic to help you solve a problem like this. Think, well, if I can prove that I have two similar triangles here, then I can show that the ratio that they've given me, that those ratios are proportional to each other. In part B of this lesson, we're going to prove what we were learning about in lesson one and what you learned about in algebra two as well about properties of transversals. What I want you to do is just draw two lines. Remember, you're supposed to write down everything that I write down. Just draw two lines like that that kind of have a common endpoint up there at the top. Now, let's just draw some parallel lines through them. Let's draw four parallel lines. They don't all have to be exactly like mine. That's not the point here. So we have some parallel lines that we've drawn through them. And now let's label the segments that are there on these transversals that have been created. Call that one segment A, that B, that C, that D, that E, and that F. And that should be enough for now to help us understand what we're going to do here. Now, can you see there why those segments are proportional to each other? Why the ratio of A to B would be the same as C to D and the same as E to F? Hopefully you can see there that you have a bunch of similar triangles. Let's just take a couple of them. For example, we could take the top one and we'll just look at these sides A and B. And then let's take one, the next bigger one, and that would be C plus A, and then B plus D would be its sides. And remember, they have, they have to be similar because they have these transversals going through them, so that means this angle and this angle are the same, and they have the same top angle, and this angle here, we'll put an extra tick mark in it to show that that one is the same. So they have that overlapping top angle in common. They have two angles in common. The third one has to be in common anyway, right? So if we set up some proportions here using similar triangles, we could say that side A over, or side A plus C, that'd be an easier way to do this, side A plus C over A is proportional to side B plus D over B. And let's just think about this. We could simplify that. A over A would just be 1 plus C over A. So we have 1 plus C over A is equal to B over B, which is 1 plus D over B. So those ones would cancel. We end up with C over A is equal to D over B. And look at what we have there. The ratio of those segments is proportional to each other. Look at what I'm circling here. C over A. That ratio is proportional to B, D over B. We can do it like that, or we could rearrange this. Just cross multiply C, B is equal to A, D. And then we could do a little bit of division here and get C over D is equal to A over B. So it doesn't matter which way you do the proportions on these. It can be all along one side, A over B um, is proportional to C over D, or you could say A over C is proportional to B over D. So what we've done here is use similar triangles to prove that when transversals are cut by parallel lines or Parallel lines are cut by transversals is actually what it is. The segments formed for the transversals, those segments are proportional to each other. We use deductive reasoning there, right? We applied some of the rules that we already knew about similar triangles to prove that transversals, when they cut parallel lines, those sides or segments are proportional. Let's solve a problem that's dealing with transversals. We have these three parallel lines and two transversals cutting through them. Let's solve 
that for x. So we have those segments. We know that we could write it 4 over x plus 7 equals 3 over 2x minus 1 or 4 over 3. I'll just do it like that. 4 over 3 is equal to x plus 7 over 2x minus 1. Now we just cross multiply 4 times 2x minus 1 is equal to 3 times x plus 7. And we end up with 4 times 2x is 8x minus 4 is equal to 3 times x is 3x plus 21. Subtract 3x from both sides and we get 5x on the left. And then add 4 to both sides and we'd have 21 plus 4 is 25. 5 times 5 is 25, so x is equal to 5. Think about the deductive reasoning steps we used here. We used what we knew about similar triangles to prove that transversals, their segments are proportional to each other when transversals cut parallel lines. Those segments are proportional. We used that to prove in this relationship that x equaled 5. Anytime we have an equation, remember, we can always substitute back into the original equation that we had to verify our results. So let's put the 5 back into the beginning equation. 5 plus 7 is 12 over 10 minus 1 would be 9. 12 over 9, that does simplify to 4 over 3. So that gives us confidence that x equals 5 is the correct answer. Part C of this lesson is on bisectors and side ratios. What I want you to do is just draw a triangle similar to the one I have. Draw that on your paper. And then split that top angle. Make a bisector. So split it right into two equal halves. Equal angles, basically, or congruent angles. So we'll call one of them angle 1. And the other one angle 2. Now, we've got some sides there as well that we can work with. We have this segment or side A, B, C, and D. Now, what I want to do is prove that those sides are proportional, like AB is proportional to C over D. I'm sorry, D over C. In order to do this, what we need to do is draw a line that's parallel to the bisector and then we need to continue that segment D continue its path until it intersects now think about what we've done here we basically have two parallel segments this and then this those are parallel to each other so think about angle 2 there angle 2 is the same thing as this angle right here. And I'll put I'll kind of shade this one in in green so we can keep up with them. Actually yellow. Now you have to think about this carefully but that segment A that intersects those parallel lines as well right so it's a transversal and so this angle here that's angle 1 that's the same as that angle right there. So think about this. Remember what we did to start with? Angle 1 and angle 2, those are congruent to each other because we made a bisector there. So that means that red angle 1 and the yellow angle 2 are the same. And therefore, the two angles on that new triangle over to the left, let's just use a different color now to see what I'm talking about here. I'll just put a tick mark through them. Those two have to be the same, right? Those two angles have to be the same. So that means the sides opposite them are similar in size. We'll call this segment over here M. And I know it's kind of hard to see, but just think about your two parallel lines. And think about that MD side and the BC side. If you kind of rotated all this around, like maybe 90 degrees to the left, you'd see that MD and BC are transversals that are being cut by those parallel lines. And therefore we can look at the ratio of sides there. 
the ratio of m over b is equal to d over c. We can replace m with a because that triangle on the left there is an isosceles triangle since it has two angles that are the same and this ends up being a over b is equal to d over c. That ratio is proportional. So we've proven that relationship there when we bisect and a triangle we bisect one of its angles the resulting sides are proportional to each other. And let's remove all our construction marks and get back to the original triangle that we started with. So you can see there when you have a bisecting angle inside a triangle you end up with these proportional sides A over B that's proportional to D over C. That's an important relationship to remember. That might be something you want to write down in your formula book that you're making, your spiral notebook that has your rules and definitions and formulas. Draw that triangle there and then you don't have to draw this part, write that part down, but just show that for a bisecting angle, maybe identify this as a bisecting angle or segment you could say. That's a bisecting segment because it splits that angle into two equal halves. Let's do a practice problem dealing with this. We've proven that when we have a bisector in a triangle that it splits it up into proportional segments. The ratio of the ones on the left of the bisector is proportional to the ratio on the right. So here in practice problem C I've said that BD, that segment, is a bisector there. So that means that we could say, we could solve that for x by saying x over 6 equals 13 over 9. We could also do x over 13 equals 6 over 9. I mean, it doesn't matter which way we do that. We just need to be consistent in the direction that we go. We go top to bottom equals top to bottom, or left to right equals left to right. x over 6 equals 13 over 9. Cross multiply and get 9x equals 13 times 6, which is equal to 78. So x is equal to 78 over 9. The goal here isn't really to reduce that into a mixed number format, which would be 8 and 2 thirds. So we'll just leave it like it is there. So again, there we use deductive reasoning. We proved that a bisecting segment like that breaks that triangle up into equal proportions. We applied that truth to find out a new truth here in that this triangle that we have side X is equal to 78 over 9 or 8 and 2 thirds. Okay, well that's all for lesson 8.